Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex Torelli. I'm here with Alex Wolfgang Poker. Be sure to check out his YouTube because today we are doing a hand of the day that he played at the Bellagio and we're going to review his hand coming right up. So today's hand kicks off at the Bellagio. We're playing the 1-3 game. We're sitting $875 deep and we are in the big blind with King Jack Oxford. It's a few limps to me. I raise it up to $20. The under the gun plus one limper and the button both make the call. So we're going three ways to the flop. Yeah, I think this is pretty standard. I like raising big here out of position. You're raising from the big blind, which means you probably have a strong hand. You don't want to make it something like 12. You know everyone's going to call you. Right. So at least 20 sounds good, maybe even 25. But it's one of those things that you got to feel out the size that everybody calls and go big enough to where you can get it down to one or two callers post flop. Right, I usually like to go for a three X then an add an X for every caller. Yeah, I love that. And then even bigger when you're out of position. So I think that's good if you're in position, but if you're out of position, maybe even go five X plus right. one X for every caller. But yeah, this is great. So we're off to the flop with $70 in the pot, which comes King, 10, seven, two clubs. We have the Jack of clubs in our hand and uh, obviously we flop top pair here. Um, life's pretty good. I bet $20 and the under the gun plus one position folds and uh, the button calls. So on this board, I might bet even a little bigger. Like I'm all for betting a third of the pot, quarter pot uh, bet sizes, but typically I reserve this when you're in position and when the board texture is very dry. So something like king seven deuce, cool. But out of position against two players when the board's very coordinated, I might go a little bit bigger here and really charge for draws to continue against you. So something like $50 in this spot, I think would be um, okay. Perhaps more appropriate. Okay, so more like a 60 to 70 percent rather than my, yeah. my 20 to 30 Yeah, but if, if the board was something like king seven deuce, back to 25 percent just because there's so few draws that they okay. could have, there's so few equity that they could have against you. But king 10 seven, there's so many draws. Two you don't, clubs. Two yeah. clubs. You don't want to price them in to call you, especially when they're in position and it's three ways. Right. I think my logic with betting small was that I had the jack of clubs blocker. So I blocked yep. some flushes and some straights. Some straights, that's true. But I, I still, I see what you're saying with the bigger sizing. Cool. Okay, cool. So we're going heads up to the turn now with 110 in the pot, which is another king. Great turn. Uh, yeah. And uh, I bet $45 here into 110. So a little less than half pot here. Yeah. What do you think of that? Yeah, I'm actually like, I like betting small on the turn because no matter what he has he has less equity now because the board's paired and there's one card to come right. so it's not as imperative that you force him out of the hand in fact if he calls you with a draw on the turn it's it's not as bad for you because you have so much more equity given that the board already paired uh still though you're not betting that many hands on this turn so i still might go a little bit bigger um but you really think about what you're targeting you're targeting draws of course and you're targeting a hand like a 10 or a worse king so I think most of those hands, especially if he's a VIP, he limped on the buttons, probably not a great player. He might even call 60 or 70. So you kind of want to think about like, what's the most I can get and then just exploit and go for that. Okay, cool. So what, uh, he actually doesn't call, he doesn't fold. He, he doesn't... raises me to 145 now. He just throws another $100 chip in there. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what he's repping here. It smells like a king, a set. I don't know if he's really doing it with a draw type of hand. I think yeah. he's probably just going to call the 45. Especially such a small raise. If he was going to raise a draw, I think he would go bigger to 200. really 200 really try and force you to fold right. so this to me feels like a weak king type of hand like because if he had a 10 he's probably not going to raise if he has a draw he's probably right. not going to raise and i don't think he has a set because he limped on the button right so he doesn't have pocket tens because pre-flop he wouldn't limp with tens on the button pocket sevens sevens are possible so he could have sevens don't get me wrong and he could maybe some of the time have slow played like king seven on the flop, but you have a king in your hand. Right. There's two kings on the board. There's right. a seven on the board. So there's one combo of king seven. So it's like, yes, he can have that, but that's like equivalent to him having quads. Like it's really unlikely. So most likely to me, this is like, like a king eight suited type of hand, right? Like he's just going for value. And I think the reason that this makes sense is because you bet so small, he might think you have like queens or aces and go for value. If you bet bigger, he probably wouldn't raise you. Right. So what I do is I end up putting in the call here. Standard I call. I can't, no, I can't fold. You there. can't fold. Can't really raise <laughs> no. again. Doesn't, yeah. Calling fully standard. So I put in the call. We're off to the river. 400 in the pot comes with four diamonds. Pretty much a brick. Yep. Total um, brick. Yeah. I check it in flow here because obviously he raises me on the turn. The draws do miss. So what do you think about a leading range here? Is that ever possible or not really? <sighs> Maybe leading to get value from like king five king eight that would check back right. but i think those hands are going to bet for They'll you probably bet. so like you're going to win the same amount of money versus those hands regardless you beat bet 250 
or you check call 250. Hey guys, sorry, the video cut out and we lost the last, last of the footage. So I don't like leading on the river here because if you get raised, you're in a really tough spot. We're not representing too many boats. And so our opponent might raise as a bluff. He might raise for value. We really don't know what to do. I definitely like a check. As played, Wolfgang ended up checking this river. His opponent bets 250. And I think here we're in a really tough spot because he shouldn't be buffing that often, but at the same time, he's not repping that many value hands. In these sorts of spots, I typically find that when I don't know what to do, if I'm up against an opponent that is pretty straightforward, they're almost never bluffing, and sometimes I make these sort of like big folds in spots like these when I shouldn't, um, even because like they're just never bluffing. Other times when they're capable of something or they don't really know how to hand read well, or they're not necessarily on a higher level, I just am like, this doesn't make sense, so because it doesn't make sense, I end up calling. As played, Wolfgang ended up calling, and unfortunately, his opponent turned over the King Four. So yeah, he gets there with the boat, and uh, we lose that pot, but thanks for the tips on that hand. I think yeah. That'll help me with my bet sizing, and uh, thinking about what draws get there, maybe betting a little bit, or what draws on the flop, and maybe betting a little bit big there, yep. as opposed to my smaller sizing. For sure. Guys, leave your thoughts in the comment below. Go check him out, Wolfgang Poker. He has awesome vlogs uh, from all around the country, playing in awesome games. And subscribe to our channel, more awesome content's coming. Thanks a lot, guys. See you in the next one. Peace.